everyone. My name is Sharifal Mutapin and I'm from Universitas Brawijaya Malang, Indonesia. And I'd like to present my paper about measuring students' perceptions, attitudes, and intention towards English medium instruction. But first of all, allow me to express my gratitude to the committee for giving me the opportunity to present today. About my presentation, this is part of my research project in EMI at higher education institutions in Indonesia, which currently I am conducting. This is about a scale development for measuring students' behavioral intention and attitude towards EMI, as EMI is a new innovation in Indonesian higher education to teach content subjects by looking at EMI as an innovation. The scale and Actually, the results of my study, I hope that it will be useful for providing an overview of EMI and non-EMI students' perceptions and current practices of EMI in Indonesian context, which will be used for further EMI policy enactment. In my scale, I used three theories. First is diffusion of innovation theory by Rogers, which stated that EMI is an innovation. This is an idea or practice or object perceived as new by an individual or other unit of adoption. So EMI is an emerging trend at an Indonesian or at Indonesian context, which is maybe now used as a way of uh, internalization, uh, also to invite more international experts to come or students even to come to study in Indonesia. And also maybe for an international abroad in which students will later on be expected to further take their studies abroad. And here, students perceive innovation attributes influence individual adoptions of innovation. This is a decision to make full use of an innovation as the best course of action available. Here, the perception will determine how EMI is applied or is practiced at higher education institutions in Indonesia. As so far, there have been diverse attitudes towards EMI, and I think these uh, diverse attitudes will lead to different rate of adoption of EMI in Indonesian higher education institutions. Well, for example, when EMI is introduced, especially in Indonesia, uh, students, actors, and educators may be fearful about using it to do the westernization maybe or maybe national language deterioration or maybe it's a more profit oriented policy because so far there have been a belief that EMI is only used for those who are from the high social status. So decision to accept an innovation and innovation adoption rate are affected by the uh, perceptions of the uh, uh, maybe students or lecturers or maybe policymakers or maybe the governments towards the innovation EMI itself. The attributes of innovation based on Rogers are there are a uh, relative advantage. This is maybe about how innovation uh, EMI in this case is perceived as being better than the idea it supersedes. For example, how it's uh, maybe better to teach content rather than uh, maybe uh, uh, maybe like uh, content based or maybe like uh, uh, maybe uh, ESP for example. The second attribute is its compatibility. So how EMI is compatible in which it's consistent with the existing values, past experiences and needs of potential adopters. The third one is the complexity. So EMI may be perceived as a complex uh, innovation because it's uh, relatively difficult to apply or to practice or to understand, for example, because so far there have been maybe no clear guidelines, maybe students and teachers in limited English proficiency. But the fourth one is the trial ability. So how EMI has been practiced and tried out to develop students' discipline and knowledge. The third one is the observability. So here it's the degree to which the results are of an EMI of an innovation are visible to others. For example, in this case, how students taking EMI uh, uh, are successful in their job, for example. 
how students taking EMI have better English proficiency for them than the non-EMI students. The next theoretical framework is by Fisben and S. Uh, Zen, in which the uh, attitude, uh, according to them, is a learned predisposition to respond to an object or class of object in a consistently favorable or unfavorable way. Here, I think, uh, based on some experts, attitudes are believed as key factors in whether an innovation is accepted or not. And this is further argued by Fankatis and Davis, in which uh, the role of attitude in influencing the adoption of the new system, in this case the EMA policy, is very, very important. And in Indonesia, while ministerial pronunciation may have been given encouragement to high education institutions to use EMI, so far there is no official policy, and even the legal position of EMI is still questionable. And the third one is about behavioral intention. In this case, uh, behavioral intention is a measure of the strength of one's intention to perform a specified behavior, in this case to practice EMI. Attitude and behavioral intention relationship implies that people from intentions, people form intentions to perform behaviors towards which they have positive effects. So whether they are taking EMI uh, is maybe going to give them positive effects, either improve English proficiency, even enhance uh, maybe uh, disciplinary knowledge, or even maybe for their future careers or for their future academic uh, maybe uh, studies. So based on Davis, I think behavioral intention is determined by the perceived usefulness and attitude towards an innovation. While EMI now is spreading fast in Indonesian higher education institutions, but it's, 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 uh, yeah, it's, 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 I'm so sorry to say that uh, only prestigious higher education institutions are currently adopting EMA, while maybe uh, those maybe from a middle or maybe from low class universities, they are still struggling, or maybe they are uh, afraid of applying EMI. So, my scale development here is by using all these three theories. Uh, expected to examine how EMI and non-EMI students' perceptions towards EMI attributes, relative advantage, compatibility, complexity, trialability, and observability in relationship with their attitude and behavior intention towards adopting or continuing to use EMI. Those uh, uh, theories then uh, I uh, use and then I try to develop my skill uh, with the uh, these uh, stages first is I conducted an expert's validation. Uh, so I asked the, some experts in the field of education and travel to look at my skill. And then uh, I conducted a cognitive and intensive interview with uh, some uh, real participants yeah, from uh, EFL context. And then I conducted focus group discussion uh, for uh, looking at some suggestions maybe by uh, having some feedbacks from my classmates or from my uh, maybe colleagues. And the last one is the pilot testing, by distributing the limited, uh, maybe the uh, scale I developed to limited sample of similar research respondents. The experts validation, which I already conducted, I did uh, uh, validation to three professors. They are professors in education, the uh, professors in table and also assistant professor to look at my skill developments. And here I think by uh, looking at the uh, uh, skill which I already developed, they give me some suggestions. For example, uh, looking at the uh, uh, five constructs, whether the five constructs are applicable in the AMI study. And maybe uh, about the uh, for example, how uh, the questionnaire will be distributed, whether it's going to be in Indonesian or English, because this will influence their understandability of the uh, uh, questionnaire or skill, and then this will determine their uh, maybe uh, answer also. The next, this is an example of uh, the experts' uh, validation. For example, in terms of the relative advantage, maybe the first question, using English in my class, I can understand 
content subjects in my study. So the expert gives uh, some comments whether EMI uh, is familiar or not to the student. So I think this is important to first define what EMI is. So I think this uh, gives me an idea of how I should introduce or give the uh, definition of EMI at the introduction of my skill. Uh, this is about the compatibility. I think uh, how uh, my questions are in my scale are uh, uh, commented by the uh, experts. Yeah, here I think, for example, like uh, question number nine, uh, taking MI fits with my academic study needs. Well, academic and non-academic. What are these? Maybe it uh, is important for me to maybe clarify these questions. This is about trialability. So I, I, I uh, got some comments from the experts, for example, about uh, how I have the opportunities to try different learning studies in EMI class. This can be maybe by giving the examples to the participants about maybe learning strategies. And the next is about observability. So how EMI is observed here, I think uh, there are uh, some comments uh, or feedbacks from the experts that Maybe uh, EMI students can demonstrate good mastery of the content subject. What is meant by good? Uh, is it appropriate? Is it a satisfactory uh, mastery? So I think this is the uh, uh, very good suggestion for the experts to improve my uh, skill. The next, I did an interview, a cognitive intensive interview. So I got some feedbacks also from uh, my colleagues as well that uh, some terms um, are possibly misunderstood. For example, taking EMI gives me more prestige. What is prestige? Is it um, being proud or it's a kind of reputation, for example? The next, some terms need to be more specific, such as uh, learning strategies. Maybe it's important for uh, them to uh, maybe uh, have more specific uh, strategy here. Is it skimming or scanning uh, in reading, for example? or uh, or what? Yeah. Okay. The next, uh, the third one is I conducted a focus group, uh, uh, yeah, discussion. Here, I think uh, from the focus group discussion, I uh, found that some terms need to be revised for avoiding misunderstanding or ambiguity, and I think I should consider the number of perceptions constructs used in the survey, and also who will be the research participants: Indonesians, which universities? Cross countries study. So, uh, is it for EMI or not EMI course students? But I think the uh, scale uh, should be either for both EMI and non EMI. So, I, I, I could uh, look at how the uh, non EMI students' uh, perceptions about EMI, whether they will prefer to take EMI, or the existing EMI students, whether uh, so far, after taking the BM for some time, they, they have uh, maybe different attitudes toward EMI. And maybe what statistical analysis, uh, which I will uh, use for uh, analyzing my data. And then I conducted pilot testing, and I think I've uh, uh, got some uh, uh, good results later. And I, I applied this to similar participants of EFL context students. I, I also provided uh, uh, incentives for them, like giving them some gifts for the first 20 participants, because I believe that uh, by uh, providing this, it will increase uh, the uh, rate response. This is uh, what my questionnaire looks like. So I sent uh, my questionnaire online through uh, Google uh, form, and they uh, fill in the questionnaire uh, during the uh, pilot uh, testing. And this is the results of my pilot testing. I think I got a good, uh, 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 yeah, enough uh, respondents. I think uh, 30 uh, respondents for my pilot testing. And I think uh, this uh, pilot testing uh, tries to accommodate students from different uh, study backgrounds, from accounting, from management, from economics, and also from English literature. And the reliability, I think I got, uh, good uh, reliability it's a uh, fine 85 uh, with 20 items and i think this is uh, enough uh, this is maybe good enough and maybe it's good and i think 
this uh, scale can be applied to uh, measure students uh, maybe perceptions, uh, attitudes and intention or behavior in relation to what EMI. Okay, so that's all my presentation. Thank you very much for your time. Sir.